Hello and welcome to IMI Employability Week. I'm joined today uh, with Mary Thompson and Sharon Spall, directors from We Recruit Auto, um, where today we'll be talking about the importance of communication. Um, so hi Mary, hi Sharon. Hi. <laughs> Tell me a bit more about uh, We Recruit Auto. Uh, we Recruit Auto is a, a relatively new business. We um, set up in November 2019, um, but myself and Sharon have been recruiting in the motor trade for about 20 years between us. Um, so we only deal with permanent positions um, and it can be absolutely anything as long as it's motor trade related. So whether it's um, a dealership or a repairer, or a supplier to the motor industry, um, whether it's sales, our sales accounts, marketing, IT, anything motor trade, that's what we love. Brilliant, perfect. Okay, so let's get started. So um, during our video uh, on communication, we discussed obviously the importance of uh, communication and the different ways that we communicate. Um, so, Obviously, we, we've had the expression, actions speak louder than words. So uh, tell me about your, um, your take on the importance of uh, body language as a form of communication. Yeah, I mean, body language is, is incredibly important. Um, it's it's more, more important than verbal communication in the, in the first instance, certainly, um, because if you're going for an interview, for example, um, they, your future employer will see you before they actually speak to you. So if you're sat in a reception area um, looking, you know, really positive and, and your posture is good, um, it, can, it can make a really good impression. However, if you're sat there and um, slouched, chewing gum, not really looking very interested, obviously that, that perhaps may, may give the wrong impression. Um, and then equally throughout the interview process, um, body language is, is still really important because you're looking at, they're looking at eye contact, um, how positive you are, what your what your arms might be doing, because you can you can be very expressive with your arms. If you're passionate about the role, you've done your research on the position, um, and you want to get across your passion. You know, people start moving their hands. Um, whereas if you're obviously sat back with your arms folded um, or sat on your hands because you're nervous, you don't want to fidget. Um, it can it can obviously leave a different impression again. Um, throughout the um, the interview, the the employer is going to be looking at the type of role and how you maybe fit with that. So, for example, a customer facing role, they're going to be looking at, um, you know, how a customer is going to find this person. Are they going to are they going to want to go up to them at a service desk and, and talk to them about something that's wrong with their car? Um, are they going to want to buy from this person? You know, it's all, all body language is, is so important throughout. Um, if, they're, if they're going for a management position, then they're going to be looking at, is this person going to be approachable, both by staff members, but equally how they, how they might deal with a board, a board meeting scenario. Um, and then if you're non-customer facing, you know, you're in the workshop, how is this person going to interact with their, with their work colleagues? What's, what's it going to be like with the team fit and the culture? Are they going to fit in with the culture that they've got there? Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's being thinking about that throughout really and then equally with with the going back to the difficult questions part and, and being prepared for that if, if the candidate is really prepared for an interview um they should be prepared for any any awkward or difficult questions that might come up perhaps about gaps in their cvs that they might be asked about if they're prepared for that then their body language is, is likely to be more confident in answering those um, rather than if you weren't if you weren't expecting those questions or weren't prepared for them um, you may well start looking down at the ground or start fidgeting and, and then that may well look like you're, you've got something to hide perhaps. So it's being really prepared that will help your confidence and, and help your body language throughout the entire interview. And again, it's, if, you're, if you're lucky enough to get through to a second stage interview, it's not then being overconfident and thinking that you know, you've, you've, you've got it in the bag already before being offered the role because your confidence could go over the top and, and you could you don't want to be slouching in the chair and being over familiar um because you still you've still got some impressing to do and and they still haven't made up their mind so it's it's being consistent throughout brilliant thank you and and so leading on from that um would you say that communication is important through 
every stage of the uh, interview process from obviously, you know, submitting CV, applying for a job to uh, interview, post interview, that sort of thing. Um, yes, absolutely. So it can start from, for example, a cover letter, um, tailoring a cover letter for that specific role, um, your pre-interview communication with the employer or if you're um, being represented by a recruitment agency, and that communication in advance of the interview to say, I'm prepared, These are, this is the research that I've done, and I'm really looking forward to the interview. It, that all um, communicates a positive impression to, to the employer. Um, and a lot of the time, the employers, they might have a handful of candidates who are potentially on a par in terms of their experience. And what they'll be looking for is somebody who um, is, you know, really, really wants that job. So if you come out of an interview and you're absolutely buzzing about everything, you know, you, you love the, the people, the environment, the brand, um, the, the management team, and you come away thinking, I can really see myself working there then to, to follow up with um, an email again, either to the recruiter or if you're applying directly to that manager to, to say, thank you for taking the time to interview me. Um, I'm really interested in the position and I'd love to be given the opportunity. That small piece of communication can make the difference between getting the job offer and, and then choosing somebody else. Um, and sort of on, on the same lines, we, we, Sharon and myself were talking about um, where candidates maybe don't tick all of the boxes. Um, if they've been for an interview and there's a couple of areas where maybe their experience or their skills are weaker, to include that in the follow-up, um, to say, you know, I, I appreciate that in this area I'm a little weaker than perhaps you're looking for, but I'm really keen to, to learn, then that shows A, that you've listened to the employer and what they're looking for, and it's a positive communication and a positive proactive approach which can make a, a huge difference to um, a prospective employer. And it's, um, it, it goes on as well on that side with, if you've arranged an interview, but you've perhaps had, had second thoughts, or maybe you've been offered something else in the meantime, rather than, um, it might be a, a really difficult and awkward conversation to call up and say, I don't, I don't want the job anymore, I found something else. Um, but the worst thing to do would be to, to just not turn up. Um, because the motor trade is a very, very small place and you never know the manager that you've, you've just failed to turn up to an interview for may well become your manager at a different um, company a few years down the line and that, that might then be an even more awkward conversation that you're going to have. So the importance of communicating either to the recruiter or to supply directly to just say, be polite and courteous and thank you for the opportunity, but um, you know, I, I found something else I've decided not to go forward with, the, with my application. It, it just means that you, you won't potentially burn the bridges um, with that employer in the, in, the, in the future. Yeah, that's some really good advice. The auto industry is very is a very small industry. Everyone seems to know each other and has links with each other as well. So definitely that's brilliant. Um, lastly, why is it so important to have um, good communication skills? You know, you think today when we have uh, apps and different messenger services and things. So why is it so important to still have those kind of fundamental communication skills? Um, yeah, I mean, in a sense, that, that's sort of all the more reason um, why it's important. So particularly in this day and age, a lot of young people, um, when they're, they're growing up and they're learning to communicate, everything seems to be done nowadays through a phone or an app. So whether it's um, speaking to friends rather than picking up the phone and, and talking on the phone or my text or WhatsApp or a Facebook message. Um, if they're looking to order a takeaway, they would go onto an app and, and order a takeaway rather than either going in or, or picking up the phone again and actually speaking to people. So younger people now growing up and, and joining the world of employment, they kind of have had less opportunity in a sense for that face-to-face -face communication, but it's still really important in a retail environment um, or, or, you know, even not necessarily to customers, but to be able to communicate well with colleagues and, and co-workers. Um, so being able to demonstrate that you can communicate clearly in person or in writing, you know, if you're emailing, making sure that it's not um, in text, text talk, you know, but a formal professional, dear sir, madam type email, um, can really show that you can stand out above other candidates. Brilliant. Perfect. 
Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. That is unfortunately all we have time for, but thank you so much to uh, Sharon and Mary for joining me today. Um, please take a look at their website, which is www.werecruitauto.co.uk and check out their social media. And thanks again for joining.